In this video, we're gonna talk about doing video editing and motion graphics on an iPad with LumaFusion. Real quick, you're watching VP Land. Special thanks to our sponsors, Blackmagic and Atomos for helping make our NAB coverage possible. And now back to the video. I'm here with Chris from LumaTouch. Chris, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, so yeah, why don't you tell me, first off, just give me an overview, if you're not familiar. LumaTouch. Yeah, so for those who aren't familiar, LumaTouch makes an app called LumaFusion that runs on all phones and tablets. Now, we used to be iOS only, but now we run on Android devices right. as well. And we were really the first professional mobile video editor that came out on tablets and phones. And we've built a, quite a reputation you know, in that regard. And we keep adding to the app to make it a more and more powerful alternative to desktop editing. And touch-based editing is just a really different feel. You can sit back on your chick couch. We had all of our team editing on the airplane on the way over here. Mm. We've got people in the Coast Guard who use it where they have no internet connection and no desktop they can work with can pull out their phone or pull out their tablet and edit wherever they are. And so it's a really different workflow and a lot of fun to work with. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a very, very powerful app for what you can do on a portable tablet. Absolutely. Um, and what do you have going on new? Uh, new right, updates so and, yeah. what we're showing here is our new 5.0 version, which will be coming out a little later this summer. And we're adding two big features that have been our users have been asking for for a long time. One is our enhanced keyframer. And it gives you the ability, you know, we've always had keyframing in the app, but it's been fairly linear, you know, uh, motions. And what we've added is a really powerful keyframe editor that allows you to both edit the path to get curved paths, but also to edit the ease to control exactly the rate of motion throughout your, your keyframes. And we've done it in a way that I think is really unique. We're really giving you the power of After Effects as far as the motion capabilities, mm -hmm. but with a simpler user interface. And so it's really easy to get the exact, a really graceful motion of your, you know, of your objects moving through the scene to do you know, animations and things like that really easily. And um, so that's the first part of it. The second part of it is speed ramping. That by far is the most requested feature in LumaFusion um, since day one. And we've done a really nice job on that where you can now really easily do a hero shot where you zoom in on something, then slow down, and then zoom back out uh -huh. from it. Freeze frame is easier than ever. Um, so those are the two big things. That's an in-app purchase called our enhanced keyframing pack. And that'll be another $20, one-time purchase as always. We don't do a subscription. Um, and then we're also doing a number of free features in, in 5.0. Uh, grids and guides on the preview, okay. horizon line that's fully controllable, title safe areas, all that stuff. Um, and some no other nice enhancements to the UI, for example, for adjusting the size of the UI within the clip editor, which we don't have right now. And that really makes it easier to work. So we're always trying to improve the entire workflow for our users. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like just making it more powerful. And it sounds like, so I mean, are you expecting people might be using this just specifically for like motion graphics animation? Um, yeah, you know, we actually, a lot of our users do use it for motion graphics, you know, sort of a hybrid video editing and motion graphics workflow that, you know, really makes it nice, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, and so you're in this kind of new creator lab area yeah. at NAB. What's been the vibe of just sort of like creator economy in general, like how to kind of how Luma Touch fits into that? You know, we've always fit really well into the creator community. You know, our app has really been that app that you, a lot of creators start on a simple app like an iMovie or, you know, CapCut or something mm -hmm. like that, but they often find that those are limited and don't give them the kind of professional editing the tools they need. So this takes them the next step up and allows them to really have a professional editor with all the tools they need, yet it's still a lot easier to use than some of the desktop apps. You know, With mm -hmm. the desktop apps, you really have to go all in and sort of dedicate yourselves to editing. Where with LumaFusion, you can go into it once a week and still remember how to do it, and it's intuitive mm -hmm. enough where you can get the job done and, and still have the tools you need to do just about anything you can imagine. Um, and now what about, you feel like, uh, I mean, this is sort of a very good model for like doing remote workflows or cloud workflows. You have like this tablet. Um, moving the media, you're still kind of having to like move media, one source to another. You kind of feel like there's a future where it's just like we can kind of work with media in the cloud, not have to kind of keep bouncing it around, hard drives and stuff. Absolutely, you know, one of the things we've really done in here is done great integrations with um, companies like Frame.io and Dropbox with mm -hmm. Dropbox Replay so that you can have your media in the cloud. In fact, they have, you know, camera to cloud workflows where you can capture, go directly to cloud. It'll show up right in our user interface um, so that you can drag and drop the media there. You can see other people's comments on your project, do edits get you know review and approval as you go back through so that's one of the areas the ipads have also changed since when we started now when we started <laughs> yeah. there was almost no way to get media in or out and that's really how we made a name for ourselves by having direct integrations with dropbox and box and google drive and all those things and that has advanced but now you can also hook up usb-c drive so you know right off whatever camera you're using plug in the footage 
edit right off that drive, you know, on your mm -hmm. iPad. So that's an easy way to work or use one of the cloud workflows um, to work easily wherever you are. And we use Frame.io quite a bit in-house to edit our own projects. And so, you know, we put our money where our mouth is and, and our integration with LumaFusion with Frame.io is really bar none. I, it's just so tightly integrated, it feels like it's a part of the app, where with a lot of the other integrations, it feels like a little bit of a separate thing. That, yeah, you know, so like as soon as you're filming, yeah. by the time you're kind of done with the proxies, it's in the app. In the app, right, yeah, exactly. That's awesome. So yeah, it works really well, and it's a great way to edit. That's great. Um, and now with your updates, uh, just once again, the timeline and... Uh, yeah, so as far as the timeline goes, it's gonna be later this summer. We're hoping within the next month, month and a half, but you know, we're giving ourselves a little room, because as always, when we come out with it, we want it to be as perfect as it can be. And, and we're really close right now, but it's been a long process, a lot of iterations to get it to this beautiful new interface we've got. Now we're getting the bugs fixed and getting the performance perfect, and we'll have it out as soon as we can. And so, and just to give a little more is we have a couple of other things very close on the horizon um, after that, including a pack that will have adjustment layers, mm. more tracks, and new keying capabilities and masking, including a, a back, automatic AI-based background removal. Again, once, once again, entirely on device. Um, we don't, one of the things about Lubitex is we never, if you read our privacy policy, we don't take any of your data ever. We don't have your personal data and nothing gets uploaded to the cloud that you know that you don't do it yourself you know, if you're uploading to a provider. If you look at almost any of the other companies and look at their EULAs right now, you have none of that control there, and they can take any data they want. They can take anything out of your library that they want. They didn't, may not necessarily do that, but you're giving them control to do that, and we will never do that. Do you feel like there's a future where uh, instead of like these larger models where they're like are vacuuming all the data in, that maybe it's like, oh, you have a smaller model that's on your device that like you can do things like background removable like or other features in the future? Absolutely. You know, we are looking at all of those areas. So we've already done voice isolation, which is an AI-based feature. We've got the background removal coming. We're doing the, you know, text-to-speech and speech-to-text, you know, um, things in there. And then all of the types of things like being able to detect objects and scenes and being able to quickly look that up and find the media that you want. We feel there's a lot of tools that AI can help with, you know, that can help you find your media, get your media where you want it, and then give you the ability to still use your creative process to edit the way you want to do it. So. It's not that we're anti-AI in any way. We just want to use AI carefully and in a way that really enhances your creativity. And we think Apple does a good job of sort of leading the way, and so we always follow their lead in that regard. And we think this spring, the, well, the very likelihood is they'll have an on-device LLM that we'll be able to take advantage of and bring more features to uh, So you think them. when that comes out, you'll be able to tap into it oh, for absolutely. your own apps and yeah. uses? Yeah, we think so. The same way we did the, both the voice isolation and the background removal are Apple technologies that we're just tapping into and, and taking advantage of. Right. And uh, one more recap of uh, when we're at the release dates and uh, pricing for the updates. Right. So the pricing of the app itself is $29.99 in the App Store, and it's a one-time purchase again. It's not a subscription. And then the new update, the uh, enhanced, lay, enhanced key framing and speed ramping feature, that'll be $19.99, also a one-time in-app purchase for that. And that should come out uh, later this summer? Later this summer, yes. Okay. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the rest of our NAB coverage over here at this playlist and hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode.